Hi guys, I'm Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery of Space Command, but I'm also a writer for Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Star Trek New Voyages, and um, this is perhaps my favorite perk in our new Kickstarter campaign. We've got a Kickstarter campaign to finish uh, the Space Command episodes that are in post and to shoot the Space Command episode that we're now prepping. So this is an incredibly cool perk. Let me tell you about it. This is the Star Trek crate, and it's literally like a time capsule on Star Trek. Back in the 90s, when I would, was going into pitch to Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Voyager, Enterprise, they would provide me with materials to ready the pitch. This is before the internet had really taken hold and so they would actually send you physical items. And uh, and then of course I went on and did Star Trek New Voyages, uh, World Enough in Time. I co-wrote it with Michael Reeves and uh, d directed it and Elaine and I executive produced it. And that was nominated for the Hugo and the Nebula. So this covers about maybe a, a 10 year span. So let's say not maybe 1990 something to 2006 or so. And what you get for um, 500 bucks is you get PDFs, downloadable PDFs of all of this material. And I'm gonna take it out and show you what it is. It's incredible. And for, for 2,500 bucks, you can get the originals. You can get this crate sent to you. So um, that's an amazing deal. So let me show you what's in this crate. It's like literally a Star Trek time capsule. So this is the ultimate thing for any Trekkie. And you'll get um, scans of all the things that are in here for 500 bucks, plus for 2,500, you get these originals. So, and this is just stuff I threw in here that was related to Star Trek from around that period. Some of it's earlier. Some of it's actually from when Star Trek was on, on the original Star Trek was on. So these are trading cards of Star Trek, the original Star Trek from uh, Star Trek, the motion picture. You can see there's a whole bunch of them. Look at this. These are, and there's, uh, you know, all sorts of cool, cool stuff in here. Just like, you know, you can see that. So you would get scans of all this stuff, Captain Picard. And uh, so f let me just go through this because it's incredibly cool. Now, when we were doing World Enough in Time, uh, which was, you know, a Star Trek episode with George Takei, that I'm very, very proud of. You can actually watch it on Mr. Sci-Fi uh, in its entirety. Uh, Mike Akuda, who was one of the graphic designers for the original Star Trek, sent us some uh, what are called translites to when we were building the, um, the Sulu ship. And the, these ones were actually done in the wrong color. The person who printed them, printed them out in the wrong color. So these are translites that, that are actually the designs that were used in Star Trek. And uh, you can see they're pretty cool. They basically put, a, put them on a bridge set and light them from underneath and they look like computer screens. Now I also, many of you know that I did the, uh, I came up with Far Beyond the Stars. This is an autographed copy of the outline. The outline I wrote for Far Beyond the Stars, one of the classic, one of the top episodes of Star Trek. Here it is. This is my draft. It's dated October 19, is it 97? Yeah, October 7th, 1997. So you'd get a, if you, if you put up 500 bucks, you get a scan of this. If you pay 2,500, you get the original. Uh, now, this is really cool. When I was a kid, the first fanzine of Star Trek, one of the first fanzines Star Trek ever done was called Babel, uh, it was called Babel, and it had fan art and fan articles. Look at this stuff. It's incredibly rare. And so there's, I collected this when I was a kid. It's from the early 1970s. It had some wonderful artwork. Look at this. Again, you've probably never, ever, ever even seen, seen any of this stuff. These are the issues of, of that great, great, great fanzine, um, you know, with fan artwork, fan articles, uh, reviews of different drafts of the scripts, all sorts of stuff. Really incredible. Now, this is the souvenir program from Denvention where I was nominated for Hugo. So if you look in here under, uh, let me find it, uh, Hugo Awards. Yes, uh, under Best Dramatic Presentation, short form, Star Trek New Voyages, and there it is. Okay, the Hugo is the top award in science fiction. This is the real, the original um, convention play, you know, Hugo Awards souvenir playbook. And um, there, this is very, very cool. And again, it's gonna be a Star Trek grab bag. You know, for instance, this thing, it's an envelope. Inside is a very cool photo of William Shatner, but also a piece of the material that was used to make his uniform from Paramount Studios and with a certificate of, of authenticity. Look at that. So this is the material that was used in those cool tunics that Shatner wore, okay? So, 
so you can either get a PDF of, of that that you can print out and put on your wallet, or you can get the original. Um, here, now we get some really incredibly cool stuff. This is um, where none have gone before, which is a copy of the Star Trek The Next Generation script that my friend Michael Reeves wrote with my friend Diane Duane. Okay, and so this is uh, signed by Michael Reeves. Pretty incredible, really cool. Um, here's uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Uh, these are, when, when you would be pitching to the show, they would send you synopses of all of their episodes. So this is the one, this, was, this is the original copy. This is the one that was sent to me from the Star Trek offices when I was boning up. And then of course they've done so many episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. This is the actual list of all of their episodes with details so that writers coming into pitch could uh, familiarize themselves with, with that. So, uh, you know, and let's see. So this is a, a Star Trek Gold Key comic. So that's probably worth a fair amount in its own right. This is uh, Star Trek New Voyages. This is To Serve Them All My Days. This is a Star Trek New Voyages script written by Dorothy Fontana. It was shot starring uh, um, Walter Koenig reprising the role of Chekhov. So this is Dorothy Fontana's script of the great Dorothy Fontana. This is... Um, Shore Leave. This is a script by my dear friend and mentor Theodore Sturgeon. And uh, again, it's his draft of that classic episode of Star Trek. In here you also have here's a, this is more of the synopses of DS9. And so all of the episodes. Another translight panel. Um, let's see. This is that one, let's see, what do we have here? Star Trek II. This is the writer's Bible for Star Trek II. They were going to bring back a Star Trek TV series in the 1970s, and they spent a year developing this and writing uh, scripts, and this is the series Bible for Star Trek II, based Star Trek Phase Two, that was never made. It was a series that was never made, but it's this is all the information on that show. This is a merchandise catalog from the early days of Star Trek, and so probably from the 1990s. So this is at least, um, you know, 20 years old and probably more, 30. And let's see, here's, uh, there, when I, and then during, um, in 1973, there was a Star Trek convention held at a, um, at a uh, high school. And they had Theodore Sturgeon as the guest of honor and Harlan Ellison and A.E. E. Van Vogt. And they had, they had fan artwork by the high school students, which is pretty impressive. They had, uh, I mean, look, I mean, just this is incredible. I mean, just, look, there's Theodore Sturgeon, the great Star Trek writer, and here is, and there's a bio about him, and this is this was the souvenir playbook. Here's Harlan Ellison, another great Star Trek writer, another friend of mine. In fact, uh, my portrait of Harlan is over here, the one I drew of him when I was a teenager, so around about this same time. And uh, there's uh, just great, great, great stuff in here. Again, this is the original. There's only one of these. Um, this is a copy of the script of The Doomsday Machine, another great Star Trek episode written by uh, Norman Spinrad, and a great, a great script. Here, framed, is a photo I took of the great Theodore Sturgeon, great science fiction writer, great Star Trek writer. I took this photo when I was 19. It has been used as his author's photo on many of his uh, uh, books, and this is the, uh, the original print of that photo. Let's see what else was in here. Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy played Vincent Van Gogh in a stage play that I went to, and here's the original playbill of that, including information on Nimoy, information on Van Gogh. Let's see what else we, also we have in here. It's pretty incredible. I mean, it's an amazing, amazing collection. This is, this is the script of Far Beyond the Stars. So here's the script, um, signed by me, and it's the, it's, it's the production draft. It's got all the colored pages, and uh, so amazing. You know, I mean, just, I, uh, you know, here's something you will never get anywhere else. This is when I would pitch stories for Star Trek. You know, you pitch some and some sell, like Far Beyond the Stars or First Contact, and then others don't. These are my pitches, my original pitches to Star Trek, including handwritten notes, my handwritten notes. So this is just amazing, amazing stuff. And you can, for 500 bucks, you can read all of this. I mean, it's incredible. You would spend months reading all of this stuff. Let me put, and we aren't, we, aren't, we aren't even halfway through. Let me continue with this. Let's see what else will we have. Um, wow. So here's another, another file of my original Star Trek ideas, okay, 
from this is Star Trek The Next Generation. It's dated 1989. These are different stories that I came up with, stories about Worf, about Picard, about Riker, and, you know, um, and here's one called the Muse of Entropy. I don't even know what that is, but these are these are look at this. These are these are the these are the storylines I would work up to go into pitch at Paramount to Michael Piller, Ron Moore, Hans Beimler, Ricky Manning, uh, Brandon Braga, just all those amazing writers, Ira Bear, who were on these shows. So let's see what else here. I mentioned a moment ago the Star Trek uh, Phase Two, the series that 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 was never made. Uh, and this is Jaron Summers wrote, an, wrote a script uh, for Star Trek Phase Two. This is The Child, okay? This is the script he wrote for Star Trek Phase Two. It was never made, but later, years later, it was made into a Star Trek The Next Generation episode. And this is the version of that. And then I did up a, a, a photo. There was an actor who was gonna play Zahn because Leonard Nimoy wasn't going to be in that second Star Trek episode. So this is Zahn and um, and so I made up, I made this uh, this cast photo, if if Zahn, that of what it would have looked like if Star Trek Phase Two had been made. Instead, they made Star Trek the Motion Picture. But there's there's what it would have looked like with Zahn as that character. And then this comes in. This has a cover letter from Jaron Summers talking about it, and it also has the original envelope that it came in. So this is just amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Here's uh, another file of mine. Uh, uh, pitching to Star Trek. Here's, an, here's, a, here's, a, here's a premise, uh, a, an outline called All the Stars and None. I mean, there, this is like dozens and dozens of stories that I've worked up for Star Trek that could, I mean, nowadays, if I were going to do them, I could do them as novels or as, you know, fan films or whatever. But this was, this was me pitching and pitching and pitching because I was determined to, uh, you know, to get, to get uh, a sale to Star Trek, and I succeeded. But here's my working notes. You can see working notes and, and more premises and just and my handwritten notes uh possible missions for enterprise this 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 note says and possible missions for enterprise one trading party with temperamental aliens two safeguarding a conference three weddings four a state funeral and it, I, it just w was going on and on and on and on you know and uh, premises and springboards is one called love nest whatever the hell that is and uh, it just goes on and on these are these are my right from my file cabinet let's see what else is in here um, let's see, here's that. Um, Star Trek Fall 90. Wow. To writers coming into pitch, we need a Troy episode. This is a, this is a letter from Michael Piller. Um, I can, sh and it's on the Star Trek The Next Generation stationery. Look, here it is. Look at that. Michael Piller, who was the showrunner on Star Trek The Next Generation. And then there's, uh, the, these, these are, this is a production report, um, listing, um, episodes that are in post-production, that are in prep, uh, and then this is a uh, uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, something called Orpheus and the Stars, which I think probably was a, uh, um, a script that I wrote or started to write but didn't finish. And I have, I, again, you know, it's just fascinating stuff, fall 1990. This is my personal membership card to the, the Leonard Nimoy fan club. This is from uh, 1969 when Star Trek was on the air. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? 250 bucks, uh, I'm sorry, 500 bucks gets you all of a PDF of all of this. 2,500 bucks gets you this um, in the original Star Trek guide. This is the writer's guide to Star Trek, the original show. Pretty phenomenal. You'll never, you'll never see these anywhere. So um, what else is in here? It just goes on and on. Here's the script of First Contact, the story that I sold to Star Trek The Next Generation. This is the, uh, the original copy. Uh, First Contact FKA Graduation is the production number. This is a draft from when, uh, this is a draft from the show. Here's another one, um, Blood and Fire, written by David Gerald. Um, amazing, amazing stuff. A, a script that was written for Next Gen but not made. It was later made as a Star Trek New Voyages episode. Wow, phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, let's see what else we have here. Another draft of First Contact. I went through many, many drafts, okay? And I was, uh, you know, uh, there, at the, there in the middle of all of this. This is uh, Star Trek II, more material from the, the Star Trek show that was never made, the Writer's Guide. Incredible, incredible stuff. What else do we have in here? More ideas, pitches to Star Trek of mine, a, show, a, a story called Rebirth. There's phone numbers <laughs> from writer-producers at the time. 
<laughs> it's uh, this is from 1986, 1987. Uh, Star Trek Presence called Return of the Captain. Another one called Motherless Child. These are all stories that I came up with for Star Trek with many, many, many premises. Another another uh, Babel copy. Uh, Attached, which is another Star Trek, uh, you know, script by this one by Nick Sagan. Uh, let's see. Where None Have Gone Before by Diane Duane and Michael Reeves. We talked about that a moment ago. Huh? Huh? This is the first draft of that script. Here's a, this is something you would never see. This is a call sheet from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. This is a call sheet from Far Beyond the Stars. Look at that. Incredible. Incredible. Look at that. Wow. Amazing. Uh, another call sheet from Far Beyond the Stars. It just keeps going. I mean, you know, just uh, scripts from An Enterprise and, uh, you know, uh, sh yeah, just incredible. Incre I mean, it just goes on and on. I mean, in fact, I, I don't, I won't keep going through this. I mean, you're, you're a Klingon sex manual, for God's sake. Uh, you know, more and more notes by me from different pitches. Uh, and let's see what's in here. Yeah, more and more pitches way in which this, this event might personally impact on our characters. One, Picard, perhaps dovetail incident from Picard's past where he had to defy an authoritarian father to go out into space, or incident in which Picard was trapped in a bad life as a boy and someone arrived and gave him hope. Anyway, you can see that this just goes deep, deep, deep into my process of how to work, and this, you know, how to come up with Star Trek stories. This is a, a sketch. This is a sketch when they were doing a special effect on Star Trek Voyager with Robert Picardo. And this is the, uh, uh, by Dan Curry, a drawing by Dan Curry to explain how his arm disappears. And, uh, you know, and it, it just goes on. Yesterday's Enterprise, another great Star Trek The Next Generation episode. You know, Blood and Fire, you know, on and on, on and on. Uh, let's see, Unimatrix Part Two script. Here we are. Body and Soul. Uh, Let's see, Star Trek Voyager Writer's Director's Guide. I mean, look at these things. Incredible. Just incredible. Here down, we have uh, an episode of Star Trek Voyager called Drive, which is, uh, you know, another great script from that show. And these are all the original. These are what was sent to me by the show. These are not, you know, these are the, these are the original scripts. And uh, let's see, what else? Anything else to, of note to show you? I mean, it just keeps going. Yeah, this is a Star Trek Voyager. These are pictures I made to Star Trek Voyager. These are, um, this is the Star Trek Voyager technical manual, again, provided by the show to me. Here's uh, Star Trek Voyager Year Two, a script from several, Star Trek Voyager Year Three. These are scripts, these are writers, directors, guides. I mean, you can, you can see, these are, so if, you, if you're a fan of the Star Trek, um, you know, uh, here's more ideas that I came up with. Here's uh, just a ton of stuff, it just keeps going. You know, and uh, let's see, it's, it really is like, I mean, here's Far Beyond the Stars. This is my, this is my working file when I was coming up with stuff for Far Beyond the Stars. So this is the original pitch document, which I at the time called Astounding, Startling, and Amazing, which was two, which were three names of, 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 um, of, uh, of uh, magazine, science fiction magazines in the 50s. Here's uh, my handwritten notes, you know, uh, from, you know, when I was working up the idea for Far Beyond the Stars. This is f a letter from me to Hans Beimler, uh, my cover letter um, to Hans Beimler when I sent him the outline. So it says, to Hans Beimler from Mark Zickrey, October 7th, 1997. Dear Hans, here's the outline. This is Far Beyond the Stars, which I very much enjoyed working on. A note as to some of the research. And this is on Sliders Stationery, because I was a producer on Sliders at the time that Far Beyond the Stars was, was made. Uh, over the last few days, I listened to audio tapes in my collection of Harlan Ellison, Robert Silverberg, and Fred Pohl, reminiscing, reminiscing about writing on for the SF magazines of, uh, of uh, the 50s. I also watched the first episode of Eyes on the Prize, a documentary on the civil rights movement, the case of Emmett Till, a black teen from up north who was lynched for flirting with a white woman in 1954, might be germane to our subject. Another documentary of use that I've been watching is Ken Burns' Baseball, notably the late 40s, early 50s section, dealing with New York and Jackie Robinson. So again, um, it goes on and on about my research on that landmark episode. And, and it also includes, you know, it's, it's look, it's, it's stapled, it's gotten, staples gotten rusty, and it also includes my, my first draft of the outline, my, the outline that I wrote for Far Beyond the Stars. So, you know, so again, if you're a Star Trek fan, if you are 
in any way, I mean, you know, to, get, to, to pay 500 bucks and get a PDF of all of this incredible material. You know, here's another, here's another script of, from Star Trek Bloodlines. Look at this. But there it is. So, you know, or you can, or you can buy it for 2,500 bucks and get this crate, this crate of great, great, great stuff. So anyway, that's, uh, that's my pitch for the Star Trek crate. But if I were not me, if I were anybody else, any other Star Trek fan in the universe, 500 bucks to have PDFs of all of this, my God, you know, I can barely lift this crate and you can get all of this stuff. So, um, but there's a limited number of uh, copies we're going to be sending out of this, I believe. So you might want to jump on our Kickstarter campaign. The link is down there and you can pledge immediately. We're trying to, we have to hit 48,000 or it doesn't um, get, uh, get done. And so, and by the way, here's a, a caveat. If you want a PDF of this, uh, remember that if we don't hit our 48,000, it, it, none of it gets sent out to anybody. So, uh, so if you want to have this and get it and read it. I mean, it's it's months of reading. And look, I'm just putting it all back and it's tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. So um, so if you want want to, you know, be able to read this stuff, I mean, Harlan Ellison's original script of City on the Edge of Forever. Now, this is not the original copy, but there's quite a story in how I got this copy and I can tell you all about it some, some other time, sometime soon. But that's it for now. So thanks very much, and um, we'll talk again soon. But uh, please pledge the campaign. There are, there are tons of other really interesting um, things on, in our campaign for Space Command. You can, you can come on set. You can, get a, you can be trained to be director, writer, producer, actor. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing uh, offer. You can have lunch with me and some of our stars. It, it goes on and on. But we definitely want to hit the 48 grand. We're up to about 22 now. And uh, we have about 20 something more days to go. So pitch in, spread the word, help out. Um, we gotta clear about $1,000 a day to make this work. So thanks for all your help and we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye.